Morning. I've been thinking a lot about being in a relationship with someone who has ADHD or autism or both, because I see a lot of information online about how to support your partner if you are neurotypical and your partner is neurodiverse, or what kind of support you could ask from your partner if they are neurotypical. But I don't as yet see much information about what to do when you're both neurotyp- uh, neurodiverse. And I remember watching a video recently, which many of you may have seen by Brene Brown. And it was a little snippet of a video. And it was about how marriages or relationships are not 50-50. Because on any given day, one of you might be below capacity. So for example, her suggestion was that you come together at specific points during the week. And you say where you are out of 50. And if, for example, you're only on 40, you speak to your partner and you say, can you pick up this extra 10%? Can you do the extra that I am just not capable of today? Now, both me and my husband are awaiting for awaiting assessment currently. And we tried this for a week. And on most of the days, we were both 30, 30. Now, there were some days where I was like 70 or 80. Um, but they are fairly few and far between. And so, you know, our question was, how do we find that extra 40%? And for us, it just means that various DIY jobs don't get done for a very long time. Um, or the cleaning doesn't get done. But anyway, one of the tips that we found that really helps, because I tend to have a very militant approach to getting things done. So for example, in the mornings, when I'm trying to get the kids out of um, the house to get them to school on time, I give us 15 minutes to do a two minute walk because I know we're going to be late leaving and I know they're going to get distracted by snails and various other chickens and things along the way. So I know that we're going to need 15 minutes to do a two minute walk. But my husband doesn't operate that way. And so I've been trying to help him in the mornings so that I can get a bit more support from him in the mornings. And I have put this together. I don't think I can turn my, I don't know how to turn my phone around. So I'm going to show you what my little chart looks like. And it's this. And it is a very detailed list about beds needing to be made. So you tick it off when you've made the kids' beds and opened their blinds. Tick it off when our bed has been made and we've opened our blinds. Drinks for the kids, food for the kids, separate food items with suggestions for what each child eats for breakfast. ADHD meds for one of the kids. Empty the dishwasher, fill the dishwasher, tidy the kitchen. Socks are a separate activity in our house because sometimes they don't like putting their socks on until the very last minute. So that's a separate issue. And then there's hair brushing and teeth brushing. Um, I haven't I noticed I've missed off getting dressed, but that's always my job. As soon as I see them awake in the morning, I grab the clothes and dress them before they've woken up enough to protest um, and refuse. So for us, this works really well because it's I'll show you it's above the cooker. You can't miss it near the kettle. If you're going to get food or drink in the morning, which we are both very good at doing, uh, you can't miss it. And he's actually started using it. And it works really well because we don't even have to, we're not very good in the mornings. We don't really communicate very well in the mornings, neither of us. We're much more kind of mid-afternoon, evening people. Um, and so this way, we can just tick off the jobs that we have done one at a time, and we can look at it and we can see what the other spouse has done so that we don't have to repeat it. We don't even have to ask each other, have you done their teeth because it's ticked off or not? And um, he didn't use it for a good month. (laughs) It's been there a while. And for some reason, he's just started using it. I think it's because I got a bit frustrated one morning that I was a bit worn out with doing everything. And he started doing it. And it's working really, really well. Um, And we have... And I've made these lists. I I did it in a a Word document, little table with little pictures and um, associated words, exactly how you would do for a child who has autism or ADHD and needs help preparing with the time management of getting ready in the morning or having a shower. And I have lists for having a shower and doing a hair wash so that, for example, should my husband do a hair wash or help them with a shower, that I don't need to tell him the stages because they're all written down in a checklist and he knows how to do this. And here on the front door for the kids, I have their own lists and they look really long and they are really long because each thing is broken up into small small items, individual items. So put on trousers and a top or a hoodie, put on socks, get breakfast, take your vitamins for winter mostly. And dark chocolate, because our kids have dark chocolate in the mornings to boost iron and magnesium levels. 
And there's, a, there's so there's one for Monday to Thursday. There's one for Friday. And so there's all these bits of information. So they know what they're meant to be doing. To be honest, the kids don't use theirs that much. I think that my hope and my expectation is that once they start to want to be more independent, that they can then use those things in the morning to help themselves get ready. At the moment, both of them experience quite a lot of overwhelm in the mornings and it's just it's a lot easier for me to just help them to reduce that level of demands to help them get ready in the mornings and equally with my husband we find it hard being spoken at in the mornings so us having to communicate in the mornings is a level of demand on us and so these little charts mean that no one actually has to talk to each other about the practicalities of getting ready about the demands that we place on each other in the mornings which means that any conversation is just chatting or connecting. Um, it's much more pleasant type of conversation than you know having to talk about the practicalities of getting dressed and ready in the morning. So I hope that these ideas or this particular idea is something that you might consider trying in your own home to see if it can help with the, the key moments of stress in your life. And if you identify what those key moments are, then... Um, you can make a chart. So for us, it was first thing in the morning, showers, hair wash, everything else seems to work well, those do not. So that's why I've created charts around those specific activities. So um, if you want a copy, I'm very happy to send you a copy. So do let me know. Um, And um, I'll post more on mealtimes next, because that's another uh, making food and making healthy food is another thing that as a family, we have to keep on top of. So I can give you some ideas in another video around that.